I read that you sort of used an iPad to sort of play yourself. Like, how did you decide that, like, this is how you wanted to act to yourself? Or, like, how did that whole process work? Well, I thought, you know, uh, sometimes pe when people do this, they have an acting stand-in. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, if uh, no matter what, if I'm uh, acting opposite somebody else, it, that's ch going to change the direction of the scene because I'm just going to be reacting. Mm -hmm. And I, I, one of the appeals about doing this was, oh, I could really be the architect of a scene and take it to a certain place, which is never the case. And so I thought, if I, I want to act opposite myself, truly, as best, as best I can. And so for me, it became about recording audio for both characters before we did anything so that when I'm in a scene I did I was acting to no just to nobody mm -hmm. really uh, but when I'd say the line somebody off camera would have all of my lines on an iPad <laughs> and, and the cues so I would have a thing in my ear that I would hear the response mm -hmm. so um, that was how we would do it I would film the character that was driving the scene I would film that one first and then we'd settle on a take finally I'd switch over and then I'd go back and I'd study what we'd already filmed and try and memorize the movements mm -hmm. when I said things uh, what I did when I said a certain word and then I would put the thing back in my ear and just map out the mm -hmm. eyelines and pretend it was happening like the choreo I'd remembered the choreography that's interesting because sometimes you might you know you wouldn't get to pick your take like you'd see the edit and be like that's not the one I want to use mm -hmm. you know what I mean so you'd get to sort of know going in like this is what I there are certain things happened. that were tricky that we had to do because one of the things we didn't want to do was just show you know a single on the new mm -hmm. guy and then a <laughs> single on the old guy and just kind of go <laughs> yeah. back and forth uh, we wanted to see both of these characters in the same frame and there are you know, there's one take that's almost a three minute take. It's a one -er. And mm -hmm. both of the characters are moving around each other and talking to each other and I interacting. You know, that's how do you do something like that? And you have to kind of settle on one take. I have to know what the first guy is doing uh, in order to play the second guy because uh, if I'm going to watch myself pick up a you know a can of Coca-Cola and throw it in the trash can, <laughs> I, I have to know what I'm doing. So you're so not we, just like staring. Yeah, so it was space, a we, yeah. we had to we had to settle on a take before, you know, getting into the editing room sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now there's two me's, but there's one life. So what do you suggest we do? Not to spoil anything, but there's kind of like a climactic dance scene in the last app. I think that people really like to watch you dance, <laughs> like um, Celery Man from Tim and Eric. Like I, I see that GIF all the time. Why well, I mean, Tim and Eric? You can't, you just can't go wrong with Tim and Eric. Yeah. They're the funniest guys. <laughs> Why do you think people like to see you dance? <laughs> <laughs> as far as the dancing in the show, it seemed like well, this is a good way to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good example of seeing a couple really work together. It, it, you can say a lot by saying a, by just sh showing a little. There's mm -hmm. you can express yourself in a dance without words, without all of this stuff. It's a, it can be a great metaphor for the relationship. That's and that's why we used it mm -hmm. in this show. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, there's. I, I think that it's just <laughs> over time. Over, after working for now a couple of decades, <laughs> there's, there's chances are there's just gonna be some dancing in there. And then. <laughs> Do you know a place that sells guns? Apart from like the Wet Hot series, which was filmed, you know, sort of strangely, like in pieces, as yeah. far as my understanding is. Is this the first show you've sort of done from beginning to end, like the first TV show? Yeah, ever. So what was it about the show that you were like, this is it, this is the one, this is my foray into TV? I didn't think of it in to those terms mm -hmm. uh, at all. I just, I thought this exists as it is like a four-hour movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, it tells this story. There's a there's a beginning and an end and a middle. and, and But I just liked it. I... When I read it, all eight episodes were written, which is not normally the case with a, a show. Mm -hmm. Usually there's one or two and then, you know, a page that tells you where they want to take the show. But this was just eight episodes, self-contained, that I could not stop reading. And I really liked it. I liked what it was about. I thought the writing was really clever. I loved every, all of these different ideas where you're seeing something and then an episode 
episode or two later, you're seeing that same action yet through the perspective of a different character. So it makes you reevaluate what you've seen or you know what how you what opinions you might have formed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was ultimately this idea that I was going to get to play opposite myself. I had never done that. There were just so many things about it that seemed interesting and appealing mm -hmm. and that I wanted to try. But none of that w would, uh, I would never want to do, I wouldn't want to play two parts just for the sake of playing two parts. Ultimately, it has to be about the, uh, the piece as a, as a whole and the writing. And I thought Tim Greenberg, who wrote it, did such a great job mm -hmm. um, that I wanted to just do it. I hate you! I am you! How can you be sure that you are you?